time for another review. How's it going, everybody? Lately in the Airsoft community, we've been kind of transfixed on the two main things. Number one is modularity. And number two is a strange fixation about this PCC concept of pistol caliber carbines. If we take my statement that I made just now, if you look at the latter pistol caliber carbines, the ARP9 rushed on the scene and made a big splash. And much like the iPad in the tablet world, it took over the market by storm. And immediately when you think about an AR with a pistol style magazine in it, that's pretty much the first thing you think of, the ARP9. And when it comes to modularity, you'd be hard pressed to find any other gun that takes this concept to the most extreme length as the GMP Transformer, where you can actually take the whole front end, twist, turn it off, and put on another one, and voila, you almost have a new gun. What if I told you that there is a platform out there that has successfully merged the pistol caliber carbine concept and hypermodularity? They came together and then they made a baby and Oh man, the imagery is just <laughs> horrible in my mind. We have it <laughs> right here in this bag, in this very small bag. It really is a very small bag, it's a document bag. This is the long wait. Aries M45 AEG. Let's see if this guy is all pretty looks and got no identity or it's gonna make a case for itself. The gun we have here today, the Ares M45, has gotten an extreme amount of hype running behind it right into my lap as you see here and it's, it's so cute. And before we really deep dive into it, let's go over some of the external features before we kind of compare it to some of its competition. Right off the bat, you're gonna see that this gun is extremely compact, and I mean, it's small, it's tiny, and you can fit it into a whole plethora of carry options. For example, it can easily go inside a hydration bag like this. Gone are the days where you have to lug a big bag for your gun. It's nice and easily. Not only can it fit into this, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it, be pulled out of the document carrier that I had before, and I wager it would probably fit in your girlfriend's purse, or maybe even Quake's pockets. Anyways, I know the guy's got deep pockets. Back to the gun. The gun is sporting a metal upper and lower receiver, and rock and quad rails up front. Has flip up front and rear sights, and a threaded outer barrel coming in at 16 millimeter CW. Upon hearing this, I know the initial thought process. That means nothing is going to fit. Don't worry, Ares promised a whole slew of products from flash hiders to suppressors to hand guards for this gun. So it's gonna have some legs in the accessories department. Don't worry. And back to the threads. Now the gun is supposed to be you know, replicated after something that shoots a 45 ACP. So the barrel is intended to be a little bit larger than your standard 14 millimeter. The lower receiver here is designed to fit these pistol magazines and the gun comes with two. The short one and this long one. The short one can take 55 rounds and this long one can take 125 rounds. Later, there's gonna be a drum for it as well. That one can be filled up to 1,300 rounds. That's 1,300 BBs in that drum. Wow. Some of the controls are pretty standard on the M45, just as what you would see on other AEGs, such as the ambidextrous fire selector, the bolt release, which actually works because when you pull back the charging handle it exposes the hop-up right here, which is pretty standard. There are a few standout features that you would see right away when you look at this gun. We're going to talk about two of them. The first thing that we're going to talk about is this grip angle. This grip angle is quite different than what you would usually see on other AEGs. This features Ares' slimline motor right here, and the angle is 
straighter, and it feels like what you'd expect on a pistol, like say, on a Glock. The reason why it's like this in the real steel world, it usually helps to mitigate recoil, and it definitely feels better when you're using this for extended periods of time, unlike the ones with an angle. Now, I doubt there's gonna be any recoil whatsoever with this thing anyways, so I'm gonna take it for the latter. And I really do hope that it feels a little bit better shooting over time. The second feature you're gonna notice is that this gun is incredibly compact. And I mean, with this stock folded in, you're gonna be hard pressed to find something more compact than this. Now, I know there are a lot of compact or small form factor AEGs, especially in the M4 style, but a lot of them feature the small dinky stock that you gotta push all the way in. And it just never feels right because you know, the battery never fits right and you have to find these small specialty batteries. This one solves that issue because it has a true foldable stock and they redesigned the battery connectors to be contact based. Let me level with you guys. I know what you guys are thinking and I know what you guys are gonna blow up my comment section with. And that is, if it's contact based, that means if it's folded over, can the gun shoot? The gun can't shoot, right? And sadly, yes, you're right. The gun can't shoot if it's folded over. Uh, guys, don't, don't, don't click away yet. Don't click away yet. I feel you, but I'm gonna try to make a case for it. If you take this gun and you run it like a primary, right? Chances are you're gonna have that stock folded out anyways. Okay, and if you don't run it as a primary and it's a secondary option that you're using, maybe you're a sniper or for whatever reason this becomes your secondary option, it's so compact that it's really not going to get in the way. But if your concern is the fact that you wanna shoot it with the stock folded over, I fully understand where you're coming from. But give it a chance. There's still more to talk about with this bad boy. As a final added feature to this gun, I said it can transform. And oh boy, can it. Just like the GNP transformer, this front end can be swapped out for later ones that will come out soon. How you do that, right? There's this knob right here. Pull down the lever, twist. It pops out right away, and away you go. Self-contained. I wanna highlight this portion for you guys right here where the hop-up is. The reason why I wanna highlight this is because unlike the GNP Transformer, the design that they've incorporated here ensures that this portion doesn't rotate. So you don't ever have to worry about misaligning this as you're putting this back into the gun. And to reinstall is really easy. Take the tab, pull it down, press it in, turn, and away you go. Dare I say, wow, that was easier than me switching out the forehand on the GNP Transformer. Dangerously easy. All right, with all that talk, it's got my competition juices flowing, so it's time to pit the M45 against the ARP9. You know what that means? It's time for a death No, I can't say that because you know it's obviously copyrighted and we don't need any more strikes on our poor channel. So let's just get to shooting. Let's be honest, guys. This is really the part of the video that all of you have been waiting for. How does the gun stack up against its principal competition, the ARP9? Is it gonna be lackluster or is it gonna live up to some of its hype? So here it is, the M45. I've specced it out a little bit with a foregrip and a red dot because we are gonna shoot the thing. And here is the ARP9. Now I did put a red dot on it, same exact one that I have on the M45. And as you can see, they're almost the same gun. You see from the side. They're pretty much exactly the same length. While they pretty much essentially look like the same setup or kind of gun, you can already see what I was talking about earlier in regards to that pistol grip. Look at that angle. I'm really interested to see how they're gonna shoot compared to each other. 
Now, I'm gonna wager that they're both gonna feel pretty similar. But what I'm more interested in is the ergonomics of how they shoot. Enough of me talking. Let's chrono this gun and let's get to shooting. I'm using an 11.1 .1 LiPo and 0.2 gram BBs. So like I said earlier, we're gonna put the ARP9 against the M45. We're gonna see how good they can hold a group, how do the triggers compare to each other, and how does each gun fare overall? They both are using the same red dot, and let's shoot this ARP9 first. One of my favorite guns. The ARP-9, it sounds like an angry flock of bees every time I pull that trigger. You know that something's about to go down every time you send a round down range. It's such a fun gun to shoot and it holds an amazing group at this relatively CQB distance. Now let's see how the M45 stacks up. Now it's time for this bad boy. I did trick it out with an extra MOE vertical grip. Snap that into place. Selector is a little stiff, but hey, what do you do? Oh yeah. This grip angle does make it very interesting to shoot the gun and just works really well with this package. I really enjoy how the stock feels like an actual AR stock so I can cheek it really well. And even though quad rails seem a little dated, it just works on this package. Now, it does have the EFCS, so I'm pretty pleased with that grouping. It almost looks spot on with the ARP9. I'm gonna run several shots, see how this trigger actually feels. It's a little soft, and clicky like you would expect from a lot of Aries and Amoeba style triggers, so it's nothing that we're not familiar with. Let's see how it feels. Mm. Oh yeah, it's not a slouch in any way whatsoever. I like it, I really like it. I talked about two guns in this review, GNP Transformer and the GNG. ARP9, if you wanna check out both of those reviews, you know where to go. The card above, or you can find the links in the description below. If you still don't know where they are, you've come to the right place. We have signals all over the screen for you guys to find out where those things are. Now, I really want you guys to check out those two reviews before we continue. I know I always talk about context, and today is no different. Context is everything talk about the M45 and I'm about to dive into my thoughts right now. At the top of the review I posed a question and it alluded to the fact that we want to find out if the M45 is going to be a gun that incorporates the best of both worlds or it's going to lack an identity. What we found today through this short period of time where I had my hands on the M45 is well, it's definitely the former, and it's far from being the latter. What do I mean by this? This whole pistol caliber carbine trend is really making a big splash in the AEG market because people want something different. And this is not only a great platform for you to use in terms of just being an AEG, it gives beginners or people who just don't want to bother with so much fidgeting a lot to work with hypermodularity to its ability to be extremely compact. I feel like Ares, much like the iPad, I want to bring it full circle now, has taken existing innovation and technology and refined it and brought a package that is truly its own to the Airsoft community. 
But let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. You guys like pistol caliber carbines? What else do you think Airy should make for this M45 that's gonna make it even more cool than what it already is? Or just here to say hi, we're all, you know, hi. I'm always down for that too. Let me know all that in the comment section. And until the next time, guys, you guys have a good one. And if you want cool products like this and many more, check out our online store at www.redwolfairsoft.com. Now this gun is gonna be on pre-order soon. And if by the time you're watching this, it's available, you better grab yourself one because I'm sure these are going to fly off the shelf. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you on the next episode of Red Wolf TV.